Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm here on Monday, February 1st. Today is the first day of Black History Month. And to celebrate that, I'm going to read a book called I Am Rosa Parks. Brad Meltzer is the author, and it is illustrated by Christopher ooh, Eliopoulos. Wow, that, I hope I said that right. I Am Rosa Parks. I am Rosa Parks. Growing up, I was small for my age. I was sick a lot too, since we didn't have money for a doctor, but that didn't mean I was weak. When I was 11, as I was walking home from school, a boy on roller skates came zipping by and shoved me. He thought I'd be an easy target. To his surprise, I turned around and pushed him back. I knew fighting was wrong, but I didn't want him picking on me again. His mother saw what happened. She was mad that I'd pushed him. But you know what made her even matter? I was black and her son was white. She immediately started yelling. No question, it was scary. But my mother and grandfather taught me to respect myself and to expect respect from others. So instead of backing down, I stood my ground and I calmly but firmly explained, your son was the one who pushed me. I didn't bother him at all. I wasn't just standing up to that mom or even to the boy on roller skates. I was standing up for myself. After that, the boy and his mom never bothered me again. Still, it's hard to change things. Sometimes it can take a long time. Back then, if you were black, you were treated unfairly just because of the color of your skin. You weren't allowed to live in the same neighborhood as a white person, eat the, at the same restaurant, ride the same elevator, or use the same bathroom. You couldn't even drink from the same water fountain. One was marked for whites, the other for colored. When I was little, I used to wonder if white water tasted different from colored water. I even wondered if colored water came out in lots of colors, but it didn't. The only difference was I had to walk outside or even down the block to get mine. Of course, it wasn't just about water fountains. This was my school, a small old wooden building with one room and one teacher for all of us. Everyone from five years old to the sixth graders were stuffed into that one room. There were no windows, desks, and barely any books. Since most kids had to work on a farm to earn money, we only went to school five months during the year. We also brought our books home every night. Why? Because we were worried that folks who hated the color of our skin would burn down our school. Now here's the school for the kids who were white. Notice the difference? It was a new brick building with beautiful windows, new desks, and plenty of books, plus a playground. Also, if you were black, you had to walk to school. If you were white, you got to take the bus. The worst part was when I'd walk home with my brother, the kids on the bus would throw trash at us. It made me feel horrible, but there were no civil rights back then. The only solution was to move off the road. And really, what kind of solution is that? As I got older, things didn't change much. One winter, I was waiting for the local city bus. If you were black, you had to ride in the back. If you were at white, you rode up front. On that day, the back of the bus was packed. There's no room in here, lady. But there were plenty of seats in the front. I was just trying to find a place to sit. But as I entered through the front door of the bus, I tried to explain there was no room to get through the back. What do you think you're doing? You need to get off the and use the back door. 
Only whites can come in the front. The driver didn't care. He wanted me off the bus. He grabbed me by my coat sleeve. I dropped my purse near the front door. To pick it up, I sat in the front seat, a white seat. It made the driver madder than ever. That's what he called it, my bus, as if it were his. The bus wasn't his, though. It belonged to all of us. Still, that afternoon, the driver got his way. He kicked me off, but I promise you, that wasn't the last time I'd face the bus driver. From there, in addition to working as a seamstress, I started working to change things. At the NAACP, we fought for fairer laws and made sure that people's stories were heard. I also stopped using colored water fountains. I'd rather go thirsty than to be treated so poorly. It was the same with the separate elevators. Instead of riding them, I'd take the stairs. But as for real change, even I didn't know what was coming. It was the end of a busy Thursday. I was 42 years old and on the bus going home. This time, I was sitting in the first row of seats that were allowed for black people. There was one man next to me and two women across from me. It was the same driver from before, the exact same one from all those years earlier. At the third stop, a few white people got on, filling the rest of the empty seats. There was one white person left standing, so the driver told those of us in my row, let me have those front seats. At first, none of us moved, but when he asked again, y'all better make light on yourselves and let me have those seats. The other three people got up. I stayed right where I was. Sliding over to the window, I thought about what he was demanding. He wanted to take my seat away. He wanted to give it to that man. And why? Because I was black and the man was white. I knew what the rules said, but I also knew in my heart, that's not how you treat people. Without a doubt, the driver was mad, but I never lost my cool, never raised my voice. Are you gonna get up? No. People say that the reason I refused to give up my seat was because I was tired, and I was but it, was, it wasn't the kind of tired that came from aching feet. The only tired I was, was tired of giving in. Well, I'm going to have you arrested. You may go on and do so. Before me, there were other brave women who had refused to give up their seats. Still, on that day, for violating the rules of Montgomery, Alabama, I got arrested but by standing up for myself, I ignited a movement. From there, the Montgomery bus boycott began for 381 days, that's well over a year, all blacks in the city and even a few whites refused to ride the public buses. But if you don't use the buses, we'll go out of business then maybe you should think about changing your rules. Finally, the rules were changed. Public buses were no longer allowed to separate people based on the color of their skin. That was only the beginning. Eventually, we were allowed to drink from the same water fountains, ride the same elevators, and yes, go to the same schools. In the Declaration of Independence, Thomas Jefferson wrote that we're all created equal. Finally, the nation was starting to act like it. Of course, that didn't mean the fight was over. There were thousands of other peoples just like that bus driver, people. But after hearing how I didn't give up my seat, 
there were now thousands more people just like me, together, inspired, and committed to justice. In my life, people tried to knock me down, tried to make me feel less than I was. They teased me for being small, being black, being different. Let me be clear, no one should be able to do that. But if they try, you must stand strong, stand for what's right, stand up for yourself, even if it means sitting down. When you do, others will follow. I am Rosa Parks. I'm not a politician or a president or an actor or a famous business owner. I'm just an ordinary person but I'm also proof that there's no such thing as an ordinary person. I hope you'll always stand up for yourself and I hope you'll remember that we're all in this together. And here is a real picture of Rosa Parks. This is her police photo. And then this is a picture of her on a bus after bus segregation was outlawed. What a great story, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye.